Time for another installment of the Recruiting Roundup here on the YouTube and podcast homes for BamaOnline.com. Travis Schreier alongside Tim Watts and Andrew Bone. No one does recruiting like these two guys when it comes to Alabama. And guys, Alabama coming off a bye week. We'll get things going with how this staff sort of approached that weekend. It looked like, according to our coverage at BamaOnline.com and certainly my social media timelines, Uh, That, as you might expect, uh, staff members coast to coast, I guess you could say. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, it seems like a lot of those guys, I think some people get confused that they, that's an off week. You know, I know some of our workers not be a well, but people in the business consider it an off week. But, you know, the coaches are there coaching all the way through Thursday. And then Thursday night, it breaks open, uh, flights all over, drives all over. So it gets really busy after that. Yeah, and it's, it, you know, a lot of people think, you know, you're going out, you're seeing a lot of 2024 guys, which they they were. They went out and saw a lot of, uh, a lot of their commits. Um, you know, you had um, Tommy Reese out in California seeing Julian saying You had uh, T-Rob uh, also out in California on Friday. I think he did a um, – yeah, hit two games on Friday night when he saw uh, Mater Day uh, with uh, Xavier Brown and then uh, checked out uh, St. – John Bosco for uh, for Peyton Woodyard, um, but you also went. You know, a lot of these coaches also went out and saw uh, a lot of juniors, uh, kids that they hadn't been able to see in person play before. Um, you know, Eric Wolford, uh, Alabama offensive line coach, was out. You know, saw Mason Short, Dontrell Glover, two 2025 offensive line commits. But you know, a lot of it is um, you know who have you not seen this fall? And you know, the coaches have seen a lot of these you know, top end guys, you know, you know, their priority targets, they've already been able to, uh, to see in person. You know, I asked somebody the other day, I said, you know, will Alabama go out and see, um, you know, a guy like Jordan Seaton this week? Coaches have already seen him <laughs> to, twice this year. So, you know, these coaches have been kind of all over the country, um, you know, throughout the fall. So it was really about going out, seeing kids that, uh, you know, either commitments or, uh, you know, maybe even some uh, some juniors. So yeah. now they're back in Tuscaloosa and, uh, you know, getting ready for this big weekend. And they'll tie those into their area. So whoever they haven't seen as a senior, they'll hit that and go ahead and hit the juniors. I mean, it's same as, like, any recruiting cycle. You're not going to see them flying city to city for the most part. Like, you go out there, you see your guys, check them off your box, and wherever they're at, where whoever Alabama's seeing has some juniors somewhere nearby. You know, there's a – you're in California, you can shake a stick and hit, you know, three or four top 100 guys. Same in the South. I mean, it's hard to avoid. You got to really work hard not to be in an area where there's some talented guys. And with the bye week in our wake, guys, huge weekend coming up in Tuscaloosa as the Alabama Crimson Tide hosts the LSU Tigers, what seems like an annual matchup for bragging rights in the SEC Western Division and certainly national implications involved with this game as well. And I think it shows up too, right, in terms of that evolving visit list that we have right there on our roundtable at BamaOnline.com. We won't go through all the names we anticipate being on hand for this one Saturday night, but guys, safe to say, uh, if this was the old days of Studio 54, getting inside that velvet rope, might be a little bit of a challenge this weekend. The uh, I'll tell you what stands out. If nobody, it's Monday morning, obviously, but if nobody else shows up on this uh, visitor weekend, it's going to be an extremely impressive list. Just your, you know, you get your commitments coming in. Uh, the twenty fives alone are a hit list. Obviously, the top guys in twenty twenty four are going to make it. Anybody that can. So, few official visitors right now. I think that'll probably extend a little bit. Again, Monday is the first day of jockeying for who's coming the next week for Alabama and every college, really. So a lot of big-name guys are going to be trying to get on campus. And you got – there's two uh, kids that are committed elsewhere that are going to be in Tuscaloosa this weekend uh, on official visits. One is Tristan Jernigan, who's committed to Texas A&M, just coming off a a trip back out to College Station. Now he's a linebacker out of Tupelo. Uh, Been to Tuscaloosa already uh, twice this fall. So this will be his third trip uh, to Alabama. Uh, you also have Elias Williams, uh, a four-star defensive lineman out of uh, Hudson High School in Florida, uh, currently committed to Mizzou. Uh, has not been to Alabama yet, so this is going to be a big visit for him. Uh, Alabama's still looking for some more defensive linemen. They currently have two. Uh, I think if they can get 
you know, four or five total, uh, you know, they're going to be extremely happy. I think they feel good about a few guys or at least one, uh, you know, in this weekend, you know, have some more defense alignment on campus and, you know, kind of see where things go uh, from there. You talk about that running back position, I guess, for this 2024 class and how that might shake out. I guess there's been some interesting news on that front. Uh, you talked about, Andrew, some commitments, some guys uh, pledged elsewhere that very much could be in play for the Crimson Tide. That position looks like uh, it's a part of this mix. And then also, guys, uh, as you talked about earlier, in, in relation to staff getting out onto the trail, now, boy, some of these 2025s and 2026s, no shortage of superstars on that front either. Yeah, I mean, yeah. one guy, I'm sorry, one guy we're watching pretty closely is Keywan Lacey, um, the Texas running back. Alabama went in, you know, I'm not saying Alabama, you know, there's right now it's early stages, but I do know Robert Gillespie, we do know Robert Gillespie went out and saw him. Bama extended an offer. We believe he's coming in for a visit this week. He's one of those guys everyone's going to be jockeying for. But soon after the offer visit, uh, he decommitted. Ole Miss, Florida's involved. A um, little bit bit different than Daniel Hill. In fact, they're like yin and yang if you look at them. Daniel Hill, running back from Mississippi, he's a big bruising type that we feel like Alabama's in pretty good shape for. And then Keywan Lacey, he's just that next year smaller running back that can really cut it up. You know, you know Alabama would love to add you know, at least one running back. I, I think they would take two, uh, uh, you know, if they can get – the two guys, you know, two out of the uh, you know top three or four guys they're heavily recruiting right now. Uh, you know, as Tim mentioned, Daniel Hill, you know, has been to campus you know, so many times, probably more than more than I have in the last couple of years. So, you know, he's uh, he's definitely a kid that uh, you know, Alabama spent a lot of time recruiting. Uh, you know, still kind of a uh, situation where it's a top three: Alabama, South Carolina, Tennessee. Uh, but he's coming back. I think this is his fourth trip to Alabama. Uh, this season, um, and then you have you know, Keywan Lacey. Is he going to end up making it to Tuscaloosa? That's kind of been the uh, you know the rumor for the last couple of weeks. Now, you know, we've also heard that you know, Ole Miss is trying to get him on campus. You know, Florida's heavily recruiting him, so there's a lot of schools that are still in play. And I think you know after he decommitted from Nebraska the other day, that's going to attract some more attention. That's going to attract some more schools that you know may not have been recruiting him uh, previously. So you know we'll keep an eye there. You know, does a player like uh, Kevin Riley from Tuscaloosa County potentially sneak back in? Uh, he's committed to Miami, but he's been to campus you know, once or twice this fall. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if he's uh, you know back on campus this weekend. So we'll see what happens at the running back position. But yeah, Alabama still uh, still holding out at, at zero running backs in this class. Now, a lot of that has to do with what they signed last year with uh, uh, with Justice Haynes and Richard Young, but. Uh, I do think they're going to end up getting one of their top guys and potentially getting top two. two of hey, and, I, and I said this last week, it is not a great year for running back. So I think Alabama knew that last year and sold Richard Young and Justice Haynes on that alone. Uh, this year, you know, Daniel Hill's a good running back. Keywan Lace, he's a really good football player. Um, there's just not a lot of top end guys. You know, you look at five stars and guys considered, there's just not many. They really fall. Um, you know, you got one that's probably in that five star consideration committed to Georgia. But after that, I mean, it drops down to, you know, borderline top 100 guys, which is a bad year, you know, bad year, obviously, for running backs. Yeah, and a reminder, keep it right there with us on the roundtable at BamaOnline.com. We're going to have that list as it grows, changes. Uh, it's uh, basically a living thing when you talk about these type of visit weekends. Yeah, yeah like and, I said earlier, Monday they're jockeying. I mean, they've yeah. started before, but Monday begins earnest with, Working mom, you know, the minute a kid, you know, these kids have got smart. They quit announcing where they're going to the last minute because they know right now if they tell everybody maybe their life's going to be a lot easier until Friday. So we'll yeah, you have you different, different schools that are trying to pull you in this weekend. Uh, you know, I just say, uh, you know, Alabama may be LSU might be the biggest game, might be the biggest draws. You know, college game day is going to be there. But you know, there's a lot of schools that are you know going after these kids, trying to get them yeah. uh, on their campus this weekend. Because, I mean, you know, it's no, we're about to be in November here. You know, it's and kind opposing, of fun. And opposing coaches know what that environment's going to be like. LSU, mm -hmm. Alabama. I mean, you definitely would rather have them, you know, <laughs> sitting on your campus with no game than, <laughs> than, than, than there for that. So a lot of jockeying happening. Yeah, and right now on this Monday, as we record this, Andrew Bone with a really good piece at BamaOnline.com talking about some of the recruiting battles 
between LSU and Alabama. And I guess if you're LSU, if you can't have some of these same guys on your campus this weekend, I, at least they're watching you. It's in Tuscaloosa, but they're watching your football team, I guess, Andrew. But that's a that's an interesting group that you have there for us at Bama Online, too. Yeah, imagine uh, you know LSU coming to Tuscaloosa this weekend and and potentially winning the game, which they could, you know easily could. Um, you know, you got guys that are there, you know, not only in the 2024 class, but 2025. 2026. There are two players in the 2026 class ranked, or three players actually ranked number one at their position, who are going to be in Tuscaloosa you know, this weekend. Who have confirmed? Now there could be more uh, in the coming days, but you know you look at Jakeem Stewart, uh, defensive lineman out of Louisiana, you know number one defensive recruit in the country um, out of uh, uh, St. Augustine High School, a major target for Alabama and LSU. He's going to be on campus. You have. Lamar Brown, who is the number one interior offensive lineman uh, in the country, out of actually out of Baton Rouge. So you know, this is a, a kid that um, you know is going to be you know certainly have a lot of pressure on him to uh, to stay home. Uh, but this is his second visit to Alabama this year. You know, we and I'm sure we'll talk about this in a minute. But there's been so many you know intriguing battles between Alabama and LSU through the last uh, several years, and you know, more so Alabama going into Louisiana, whether that's New Orleans or Baton Rouge, and being able to pull some top end guys uh, from those areas, you know, we haven't really seen too many, uh, you know, top end guys from Alabama leave the state, go to LSU. Uh, you know, obviously, there's been a few, but not not many, not not compared to uh, to as many that have left Louisiana and gone to Alabama. So, um, you know, those are two guys: Anthony Jones, the number one linebacker in the country, in the 2026 class out of Mobile. He has high interest in both of the, both the programs. So those are just some 2026 guys. I mean, there's 2025 guys that are going to be in town. Micah DeBose, uh, number one um, interior offensive lineman in the 2025 class, going to be in town. You know, one interesting battle is Caleb Odom. Um, Odom is a commitment to Alabama. I was at Ole Miss this weekend and going back, actually going to be back at Ole Miss uh, this upcoming weekend for an official visit. But he says he's going to make a trip down to um, down to Baton Rouge at some point this month. Has not confirmed what date he's going to get down there for, but you know that's somebody that we're going to be watching closely in the 2024 class. Most of the 2024 guys, though, have already made decisions um, as far as you know Alabama LSU battles. Like Julian Sain, Julian Sain, five star quarterback. Now he committed to Alabama last November, but it was a it was a top two Alabama and LSU. He ends up committing to Alabama, so that's something. That, and that probably a lot of people have forgotten about. And that could be the case with 2025 George McIntyre as well. So, um, you know, you see yeah. Alabama and LSU, they are battling for some quarterbacks, which maybe 10 years ago, the top quarterbacks. So I don't think we really thought that was a that was a likely scenario. But now you see those two schools battling. So, yeah, Julian saying a uh, huge win. And then George McIntyre. I mean, Tennessee's obviously still in George as well. Make sure I say that. But um, LSU's trying to battle there as well. Andrew, you bring up Caleb Odom, and I just want to remind folks, if you haven't read Joseph Hastings' piece on Caleb Odom at BamaOnline.com, you need to do that. Outstanding stuff from JoJo for us there at BOL. So, Tim, let's talk about it, guys. Uh, Andrew, too. Uh, the interaction of these staffs in the other state, Alabama, during the Nick Saban era, as we kind of outlined already, extremely impactful down in Louisiana, going back to Burton Ferns and some other staff members that Nick has had. Obviously, it starts with Nick, but he's had some guys that were really good down there in the past. And then LSU working Alabama, as you said, Andrew, not to the extent that Alabama has worked Louisiana, but but what about that give and take, Tim? Yeah, I mean, Nick Saban was a menace in Mobile, right? He would get Jamarcus Russell. He had some of the biggest named guys. Chavis Jackson, people don't talk about him, but he was a really good. And he was at a St. Paul where everybody else went to Alabama. So very interesting. He won big, big battles down there. Um, got here and obviously flipped the script pretty quick. I mean, remember, he was in Mobile right away uh, trying to get back. You know, he had obviously some strong ties there, but I'll never forget. He attacked Louisiana right out of the gate when he got to Alabama. I remember Joe McKnight, one of the, you know, premier elite athletes in the country one of the best i've ever seen in high school it was one of his first calls 
huge major uproar. Joe said he was coming in for a visit. Uh, Louisiana lost their mind. Uh, very upset. And that was back then it was different. I think it was violence back, you know, 12 or 15 years ago. I don't think it was social media threats, but I uh, kid, but uh, Joe ended up at USC. Obviously Luther Davis was a huge commitment. Now, you know, me and Andrew were talking about this yesterday. When you talk about that class in state, you're always talking about Burton Scott, BJ Scott. He kind of gave Alabama street cred in 2008, started with BJ, ended up with Julio. But in Louisiana, I think Luther paved the way. You know, Luther was the LSU kid. They ended up flipping um, and sort of put Alabama's name on the map in that state a little bit like, hey, maybe we can leave. And I know that was Luther's message to a lot of them. You can leave and nothing will happen to you. So obviously Saban's valued, you know, Louisiana very highly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, just through the years, I mean, Alabama's done just such a incredible job down there. Uh, you know, we talked about that earlier, but, you know, Kenny Bell, you know, Kenny Bell in that 2009 Huge. class was another flip on signing day. <laughs> it, it was so quiet. We, you know, we kind of knew that that was, uh, that was going to happen, but uh, it was quiet. We, we actually sent a, uh, sent a crew down to his announcement and people were, you know, people at the school were wondering why, uh, <laughs> why somebody from Tuscaloosa uh, was at the signing day ceremony for, uh, for Kenny. And, you know, Sure enough, he signs with uh, with Alabama that day. Yeah. But and you yeah, know what? You know what made that even a little hotter was that flip the one and two classes. Remember that? Oh, yeah. LSU, we had them number one and Bama number two. And when Kenny flipped, it flipped the one and two. So that really, <laughs> that really had a you know that number that number number two don't hit like number one. You know. That's right. That's right. And, and yeah, you look back and I mean you the Cam Robinsons, the Cam Sams, the Dylan Moses, the. Uh, Chris Allen's. I mean, obviously Eddie Lacy. I mean, Tim Williams. Yeah, <laughs> it just goes on and Slate on. Bolden, Hootie Smitty. Jones, Smitty, Smitty. <laughs> I, obviously Smitty. I yeah, mean, just Devontae <laughs> Smith too, right? Yeah, 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 Smitty Smitty is, just Smitty. throw in Devontae Smith while we. Smitty while was, uh, you know, people forget. You know, he had that touchdown catch uh, in the uh, in the national championship against Georgia. He was committed to Georgia. Um, you know, a, a few years prior to that. So, um, you know, it, it's crazy how a lot of that stuff, you know, tends to uh, tends to work out. But you know, as far as this year, you know, there haven't really been a lot of guys that Alabama has heavily pursued in the state of Louisiana. There have been a few guys, um, even some guys that have kind of gone elsewhere, like Dominic McKinley, five-star defensive lineman who left Louisiana, uh, committed to Texas A&M. Uh, for some reason or another, Alabama just couldn't, get him uh, back on campus. He visited for junior day, but, you know, uh, we're going to see some more, you know, intriguing battles here in the future. Jabori Antoine, who is a uh, top 100 defensive back in the um, 25 class. He's going to be in Tuscaloosa uh, this weekend. I already mentioned, you know, Lamar Brown in the 2026 class and Jakeem Stewart. Those are some, some big names in Louisiana. They're going to be in Tuscaloosa uh, for the game on Saturday. So, We'll see some more future battles, but this year it looks like uh, which is going to be kind of rare. Uh, Alabama not signing a um, you know a recruit from uh, from Louisiana in this twenty twenty four class. That also leads a testament to that. I think it's a down year in recruiting. You know, it's kind of yeah. like taking more in state guys. And but it wasn't long ago that class Alabama ended up landed. You know, Shaz, Aaron Anderson. Um, I'm forgetting half of them, but. They ended up landing like four guys from the state of Louisiana that year. Brian Kelly's first year, I believe. So it's only been a couple of years removed since they were in that state. But I think it like any other state, I don't think Nick Saban targets Louisiana like got to get a Louisiana kid. I mean, it's the same everywhere else. If we like him, we'll go there and get him. If they show interest, we'll go, we'll go chase him down, work on him. Yeah, Alabama went in and got Danny Lewis late a couple yeah, cycles bro. ago after Brian Kelly made the dance video. Two different everything. recruiting angles there between Alabama and Brian Kelly. Two different routes were taken in, yeah, that, in that recruitment. Uh, I think uh, Nick's more of a Macarena line dance I, uh, guy yeah, than yeah. The, uh, the other way. Hey, um, we'll wrap this up because it, it wouldn't be LSU Alabama week and we're talking recruiting if we didn't go back to the Landon Collins situation all those years ago. So we've outlined some of them already, but I'm going to ask each of you guys – for your favorite Alabama LSU recruiting battle, not named Landon Collins. For me, it's probably uh, Cam Robinson. Um, as far as the talent standpoint, 
big time prospect, obviously came in to st- start as a freshman, right? Left tackles. He's the last one to do it since Proctor. Yes. Seems yes. like so he's that's how big a time and talent he was. Um, big battle, you know, and that was kind of quiet. That's one of the rare times I put in a crystal ball. I, I was had a, held an urge in like June in the summer. We were in Destin, and I just threw in a crystal ball, probably on a little bit alcohol induced <laughs> film, and uh, did like several times that year. I was like, how why did God, why did I even have one? But I know Alabama felt confident early. LSU's trailing a little bit in that one, obviously, and never really caught up. But from a talent standpoint, and hey, that that's a big big time recruit they got too. Guy was highly ranked and obviously extremely talented, still in the NFL. Yeah, I think, um, you know, you look back at all those recruiting battles and, you know, Alabama didn't win them all. Um, you know, Reuben Randall, uh, that was such a, you know, tight recruiting battle all the way until the end. You know, kind of the same with Leonard Fournette. I mean, Alabama yeah. felt like it had a chance there. And Burton Burns was, uh, he was visiting the school almost every week during that, uh, that, during that final month of um, even after uh, Fournette an- announced his commitment to uh, LSU, I- I'll never forget. I was at the Under Armour All-America game and Fournette was about to announce his commitment and an LSU report. I won't give his name out, but uh, he came up to me right before the announcement. He said, Hey, um, I just found out that Saban has accepted the Texas head coaching job and Leonard is actually about to announce for Texas instead of LSU and Alabama. I got the same, I got the exact same call, and I was like, "Well, why didn't he tell Tony Brown?" You know, and I was like, "I was like, seriously, like, why in the hell would he let Tony Brown, a five-star DB, walk <laughs> on the same day he's committing?" But that exact thing—that's a hundred percent true. It's crazy I'm how all these rumors. Yeah. I mean, this is five minutes before. Fournette announced. Yes, That's- like we're waiting on this. I got the exact same call. Me and Shay Dixon have talked about it many times, our LSU correspondent. And uh, yes, I got that. And I was like, man, get, I basically hung up in his face, like, get out of here. Saban didn't tell anybody but Fournette, like, get out of here. Come on. And then, of course, then Fournette announces for uh, for LSU. That, that, that guy told me, he said, he goes, he's just committing to LSU for now. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, um, we'll see what yeah, happens. That's one of those, those signing day. There's nothing like the signing day morning rumors. Um, I got to ask, I gotta ask Dylan, you both. Dylan, about- I was going to say Dylan Moses is probably, you know, one, one. That, um, that I'll I'll remember. You know, this is a kid who, you know, was on the cover of ESPN, the magazine, going into his ninth grade year. Um you know, he had offered, he was offered by LSU and Alabama very early, um, you know, as an eighth grader uh, and lived up to those expectations, um, you know, all the way throughout high school. Of course, when he when he first came out as a freshman, he was starting at, um, at cornerback for uh, for his high school. And then he moved, obviously, got continued to get a little bit bigger. But, um, you know, every single camp I used to see Dylan Moses uh, work, he was uh, work out at he was working out at as a uh, as a cornerback or a wide receiver, and that's how he I was, a, specimen. Way, he was but... a specimen. And I yeah. never, I'll be honest, that's a good call because early in the process, I never thought Alabama had a chance because he had someone close to him that hated Nick Saban at the time, and uh, to the point of posted on BamaOnline.com a few times with his thoughts, and ended up having to get banned. Yeah, he expressed oh, wow. his. No, he's – yeah, he expressed why Dylan was not going to Alabama freshman or sophomore year. And he's committed to LSU at the time, I believe. And then, obviously, that flipped and changed around. But very interesting. Good call, Andrew. Good calls from both you guys as we go through a very important week. You can catch all of those with Tim Watts and Andrew Bone right there with us at BamaOnline.com. As always, guys, appreciate you taking the time. Hey, Absolutely. anytime, man. We'll see you next week. Absolutely. So for Tim and Andrew, Travis Ryer, thanking you for joining us right here on the YouTube and podcast homes for BamaOnline.com. Keep it locked to BOL. Hang out with us on the roundtable or premium message board there at BamaOnline.com as well. Until next time, so long, everybody.